Vipassana is wrongly translated as wisdom, panya. It is not. In the suttas, uh, vipassana uh, means contemplation. And the Chinese have translated it correctly. La. Samatha and vipassana, they translate it as chur, kwan. Chur is stilling the mind. Kwan is contemplation. Uh, so, vipassana is just contemplation. And... Uh, in the suttas, it is said uh, that you need samatha and vipassana uh, to attain enlightenment. Uh. So samatha means the four jhanas. Vipassana means listening to the Dhamma. If you listen to the Dhamma and you understand the Dhamma, you contemplate the Dhamma, that is vipassana. That is why uh, in the suttas, uh, the Buddha says uh, that a, person's become, a person becomes enlightened uh, under five conditions. Uh. Five occasions a person becomes enlightened. First one is when he is listening to the Dhamma. And then he contemplates uh, and he understands uh, and he becomes enlightened. The second one when he is teaching the Dhamma. When he is teaching also he is contemplating. Uh, there is also Vipassana there. Also he can become enlightened. The third one when he is repeating the Dhamma. During the Buddha's time uh, they had no books. They had to repeat the suttas again and again. You know. And because it was in their local language... Uh, each time they repeat the, the, the sutta, uh, they can understand. Uh, so the more times they repeat, uh, it's just like we reading the sutta more times. Uh, the more times you read the sutta, uh, the more we understand. Uh, uh, that is the third occasion, uh, the person becomes enlightened. The fourth one, when he's reflecting on the Dhamma. Having learned the, the, the sutta, uh, you reflect on it, uh, think about it. Uh, and then you can understand. Uh, uh, that also is vipassana. Then the last one uh, is during meditation. And he contemplates on the samadhi nimitta. Uh, so you see, out of the five times when a person becomes enlightened, uh, four of them uh, has to do with Dhamma. And these four is actually Vipassana. A lot of people don't realize uh, that Vipassana meditation that is taught nowadays uh, was created uh, about 40 years ago. 100 years ago, uh, you talk to people, nobody heard of Vipassana meditation. If anybody can tell me the contrary, uh, uh, you just show me any evidence uh, that Vipassana meditation uh, existed uh, earlier than 40 years ago. I challenge anybody to prove to me uh, that Vipassana meditation uh, existed more than 40 years ago. Absolutely not, not possible. Because Vipassana meditation started with Mahasi Sayadaw. That is why it was called Mahasi method of meditation. Uh, it was not called the Buddha's method of meditation because uh, at that time... Uh, in Burma, uh, everybody knew uh, that the Buddha's method of meditation was Anapanasati. In the Sangyutta Nikaya, the Buddha said, told his disciples, if anybody asks what type of meditation the Buddha practiced, the Buddha told them uh, to say, uh, told them, uh, you tell them uh, that the Buddha practiced Anapanasati. The Buddha said, before enlightenment, he practiced Anapanasati. And even after enlightenment, he practices Anapanasati. So the Buddha's method uh, is Anapanasati. But nowadays, uh, you have a certain Vipassana monk, uh, he put in his book uh, that the Buddha practiced Vipassana meditation. This either shows ignorance of the suttas, or he's a liar. If he knows uh, uh, this sutta, uh, he's a great liar. The Buddha never practiced Vipassana meditation. The Vipassana meditation, uh, taught by Mahasi Sayadaw, is based on two things. One is the commentary. The commentary says uh, that you can have an arahana without jhana, which contradicts the Majjhima Nikaya Suttala. And another book uh, uh, is the Visuddhi Maga. Inside the Visuddhi Maga, they talk about 16 jhanas, 16 knowledges. Uh, uh, and these 16 knowledges uh, is not found in the suttas, not taught by the Buddha. Uh, and this book, Visuddhi Maga, was written uh, 900 years after the Buddha passed away. 900 years, so long. So how can it be the Buddha's teaching? It's just like nowadays, uh, people say, uh, some people say, Ikwan Tao is Buddhism. But Ikwan Tao only started how many years ago? 100 years ago, was Ikwan Tao around? It was not around. So how can it be Buddhism? It just started, uh, right? 
Uh, so it's the same with Vipassana meditation. This started 40 years ago. In the Anguttara Nikaya, I think 2.3.10, uh, the Buddha says uh, two things bring you knowledge. Uh, two things. Uh, samatha and Vipassana. Uh, so, it is uh, Samatha and Vipassana can bring you insight, can give you wisdom. Uh, so, if Vipassana leads you to wisdom or leads you to insight, uh, how can it be insight? It is the practice of contemplation uh, that gives you insight. Uh, so if you practice contemplation without jhana, you still get insight, but shallower insight. Na. Might be able to bring you into stream entry. But if you have jhana, then your mind is clearer. Then when you practice vipassana, it is deeper insight. Na. It's just like na, a person, na, he comes to a certain place na, and he looks all around na, and he thinks na, he, has a, he, has, he has seen everything. Na. But then... Na, Another person comes uh, and brings him up the hill, uh, brings him up the hill. And then when he goes up to the top of the hill, uh, he can look so much further, he can see so much clearer, so much more things. So in the same way, a person without samadhi, uh, he can get insight, but shallower insight. But if he attains samadhi, uh, then his insight is much deeper. This uh, contemplation, uh, because our mind uh, works very fast, you know. Uh, in fact, uh, I don't think there's anything uh, faster than the mind, uh, right? Uh, so, because of that, when anything happens, uh, straight away, uh, your mind uh, is, is running extremely fast, you know. So, for example, when you hear the Dhamma, uh, extreme, you're, you're, you digest it so fast, uh, you don't even realize. Uh, that's why uh, uh, the, some people uh, with, with jhana, when they listen to the Buddha's discourse, uh, just listening, uh, they can digest it uh, and attain enlightenment. So some people nowadays, they say, oh, reading the sutta is only book knowledge. And then they belittle uh, reading the books. They say, this is book knowledge. This is not a uh, real experience. But then, uh, it depends. Uh, uh, the Buddha said uh, in the sutta, uh, that when you listen to the Dhamma with proper attention, uh, at that time, the five hindrances dissolve. Uh, are eliminated at that time. And the seven Bojanga are present. So this is very clear huh, that when you listen to the Dhamma with proper attention, huh, these two conditions, huh, the five hindrances are not there and the seven Bojanga are present, huh, that is the condition for you to become an Arya, huh, to attain. Huh. So what is the difference huh, between listening to the Dhamma and reading the Sutta? It's the same thing, huh? When you listen to the Dhamma, you understand, you digest it in your mind because the mind is working so fast. We have the supercomputer up here. Man. <laughs> so when we read, also it's the same. When you read, uh, it's as though the Buddha is speaking to you. Uh, and you, if you are able to digest it, uh, your mind is very clear and calm. Uh, you are able to digest it. Uh, it's the same as listening to the Dhamma. No difference. It is stated uh, that that a person like this Patachara, the bhikkhuni, eh, whose parents passed away, the husband passed away, the two sons passed away, the brother passed away, and out of grief, eh, she became mad. And then after that, eh, the Buddha taught her the Dhamma, and then she became a nun. Eh. So she practiced for many years, you know, and presumably she attained the jhanas and all that. Eh. And one day, eh, when she came back from arms round, eh, she came back, normally, you know, we monks and nuns, uh, we go on arms round barefoot. Uh. So she came back to the monastery and she took water to wash her feet. Uh. So she splashed the water on her feet. Uh. She saw the water uh, running and then sink into the ground. And then she splashed the water again and the water ran a bit further and sank into the ground. Third time she took the water and splashed again harder and then the water went further and sank into the ground. And then it struck her uh, that people, uh, there are some people in life, uh, very young, they pass away. Some people in middle age, they pass away. Some people in the old age, they pass away. But everybody has to pass away. Then uh, seeing impermanence, uh, realizing impermanence, uh, then she reflected and became enlightened. Uh, in, that, in that situation, yes, 
but not seeing a beautiful woman and, and becoming enlightened. Nah. And then that reflection must be there. That vipassana is that reflection, contemplation. And if you are practicing meditation nah, according to the Buddha's method, nah, that means uh, uh, the Buddha's method of meditation actually is samatha because nah, in the Majjhima Nikaya, Rebel Ananda was asked, what type of meditation is praised by the Buddha? And he said the first jhana, the second jhana, the third jhana, the fourth jhana. Only this is Buddhist meditation, no other thing. And you can understand why this is Buddhist meditation, because unless you are able to attain the jhana and stop the flow of the mind, you can never break this, this tendency of the mind, asava, to flow. The only way uh, to stop samsara uh, is to break the tendency of the mind to, to flow, uh, right? To control the mind, uh, have a hold on the mind. Uh. But most of us, uh, unless you have attained uh, samadhi, uh, we don't have a hold on the mind. Luan luan siyong. Ah, ame pun siyong. So, that is why you can understand why, uh, uh, only jhana will bring you to enlightenment uh, because uh, you are able to control the mind. But the final blow uh, is actually vipassana uh, from the dhamma. Uh, the understanding of the dhamma uh, make you let go. Uh, let go what? Let go the clinging in the mind. In the mind, you know. The clinging is in the mind. That's why there's a famous Japanese uh, Zen teacher called Dogen. He said, uh, renunciation uh, got four steps. Uh, the first is to renounce the world. The second uh, is to renounce your friends and your relatives. Uh. The third uh, is to renounce your body. The last uh, is to renounce your mind. Uh, when you renounce your mind, uh, all the clinging inside, uh, you let go. Uh. That ego, you let go. Uh. The clinging is so strong uh, that it's uh, automatic uh, that we don't observe it. And because it's programmed into our mind, uh, that's why like even our breathing uh, actually is it's actually uh, intentional breathing. You know? But we, we don't notice it because it's already programmed into our mind. But one day somebody press your, your stop, you suffocate you uh, from breathing and then you'll be struggling to breathe. <laughs> right? uh, you want to breathe. 